Hello everyone, you're watching Physio Classroom channel and in today's video we are going to discuss the neurophysiological interpretation of M4 motor response that we see in Glasgow Coma Scale. This response is characterized by a withdrawal response to a painful stimuli. So before we move ahead, let's first quickly discuss the main differentiating points by which a physiotherapy student can differentiate between a M5 M4 and a M3 motor response. Now why I want to emphasize upon it is because all the three motor responses that is M5, M4 and M3 are characterized by upper limb flexion responses. Now whenever the upper limb flexion response is such that the patient is able to localize the site of pain and is actually able to remove the painful stimuli then it is known as a localization to pain response. In conditions when the patient is actually unaware about the site of pain that is the patient's brain is only aware that pain exists but pain localization is absent. In such a scenario the patient may often demonstrate a normal flexion response to pain which is the patient's upper limb goes into flexion with abduction and external rotation whereas there is a characteristic absence of the localization of the pain and this is called as the M4 motor response. M4 motor response can be characteristically differentiated with the M3 motor response which is abnormal flexion to pain. So here students must remember if on a painful stimuli the patient demonstrates normal flexion that is upper limb flexion with abduction and external rotation it is M4 response and if the patient demonstrates abnormal flexion to pain which is flexion with adduction and internal rotation at the shoulder with forearm pronation then this is known as the M3 motor response. So now let's move on with the neurophysiological explanation and interpretation of the M4 motor response. A physiotherapist can utilize some valuable informations from the neurophysiological explanation and can have idea about the brain structures or pathways that are intact and that are not functioning properly and accordingly can design the rehabilitation program for such patients. Now what I am going to describe here will be very easy to understand if you have watched my previous video of the M5 motor response interpretation. So once the painful stimuli is perceived by the receptors and taken by the pain pathway up to the level of the thalamus, the patient's brain becomes aware of the presence of the pain. So now the first thing that we need to remember is that in M4 GCS motor response, we can be assured that the pain pathway is intact up to the level of the thalamus that is patient is able to perceive the pain. Now ideally this painful stimulus should be next carried up to the level of the primary sensory area via the thalamocortical projections and as I mentioned in my previous video it is only after the stimuli reaches the parietal cortex that the brain becomes aware about the site or the localization of the pain. Now as in the M4 motor response we have a withdrawal response to pain rather than having a localization response so the next important thing that we can conclude is that the primary sensory cortex is not able to localize the pain and this can happen with three important scenarios. So the first probability could be that there is an injury or disruption of the thalamocortical projections which are responsible for the transmission of the painful stimuli signals to the parietal sensory cortex and so the brain remains unaware about the site of pain and so the parietal cortex is unable to send the feedback signals to the motor cortex. The second probability or the second scenario that could be is that there could be an injury or edema to the parietal sensory cortex and as a result although the information is reaching but it is not getting processed and analyzed. And the third case could be that the interconnecting neurons or the association fibers which connect the sensory area with the motor area are injured and as a result again the brain is not able to generate purposeful motor responses to the painful stimuli. Now in such a case the motor signals that will be generated from the primary motor area 
will be deprived of the meaningful sensory feedback stimuli. So in such a case, the primary motor cortex is going to generate motor impulses which will be more gross in their function. And what we are going to see is a normal flexion response to pain with the patient remaining unaware as to where to take the hand to remove the painful stimuli. So in head injury patients who demonstrate M4 motor response, the therapist can easily conclude that such patients are having intact pain pathway up to the level of the thalamus. The thalamus itself is functioning almost normally, but there is some problem with the thalamocortical projections as well as the functioning of the parietal sensory cortex. Rest of the part that is the primary motor area, the pyramidal tracts, spinal cord and the lower motor neuron are also intact and functioning normally. Such patients also have a fair prognosis and there are high chances of normal cognitive and consciousness recovery. So before we conclude this video, let me share with you all an important treatment tip for such patients to improve their recovery and the parietal sensory cortex functioning. Now what we can do for such patient is that we can utilize the alternate sensory stimuli like smell, vision, taste and auditory signals to activate the parietal sensory cortex because these informations are going to reach through alternate pathways and finally they will be able to recruit the neuroplasticity behavior of the brain. So for example using the visual stimulation is going to activate the occipital cortex and also the interconnections between the occipital and the parietal lobe. And so this can help in strengthening the behavior of the brain to feel for the object that it sees. So these are some of the ways that we can utilize this neurophysiological interpretation for the motor responses of GCS to treat and assess head injury patients. In my next video of GCS series, I will be covering the neurophysiological explanation for the M3 motor response, which is also known as the decorticate response. Do keep motivating us with your comments and feedback. Keep learning, keep sharing and stay connected.